Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Freak Show by Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and today we have two men whose egos are so large they can barely stand. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? I, think I didn't fair. know you identified as a man. Fuck off, John. I was talking about you and Mike. <laughs> I, and, and I think it was a fair, fair thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I have no problem with that. What are we drinking? We are drinking Playdate. By the Deep Ellum Brewing Company in Dallas, Texas. And this is a 5.4% ABV. It's been a little while since we've had a Dallas, uh, I mean, a Deep Ellum brew. Or a sour. And this is that a is sour blonde ale. Yeah. So, uh so we will we, we will see what happens here while we pour our beers. Um, what we are actually discussing today is um, we are discussing the morality of freak shows. Uh, you don't see them so much anymore, but you do still see things like um, you haven't been on YouTube, have you? Well, we don't see the traveling ones we point. saw when I was a kid. Exactly. Much, yeah. You know, you still see things like Ripley's Believe It or Not, or you did when I was a kid. I haven't seen that so much anymore. Um, so we still have certain versions Fear of it. Fear Factor, which is not actually. I think YouTube is a freak show now. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Wow. Uh, so, you know. There were those videos we were watching earlier. <laughs> <laughs> that we will be doing a show about later. <laughs> oh, Lord, no. help us all. Yeah, we will. We will. Yeah. Now everybody's imagination is it, 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 it's going wild. Let it run. That, so let what it, do let you it think run. we're doing later? <laughs> let us know in the comments. Oh, that'll be good. Um, All right. But anyway, yeah, so we're just kind of taking a look at freak shows, asking some questions about morality and consent, and um, <coughs> is it okay? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about what a freak show is first off. Yes. Uh, because, again, we don't see them like we used to. Uh, I remember when I was a kid when the, the carnivals would come through town. There was, but they still had freak shows they in did? there. Did I've never uh, actually seen one? Yeah, yeah, uh, and you know, it was it was biological rarities. It was, right. uh, you know, the uh, and sometimes crazy things people could do with their bodies. Yeah, uh, they were usually teamed up with you know feats of of, of, of skill, but, right? You know, the the strong man and the guy that could juggle fire. Yeah, but there was also you know the tattooed lady, the bearded lady. Uh, the the person that was always touted as a missing link, uh, yeah. you know, because of their uh, really usually because of person. a deformity or yeah. or, or a skin pigmentation that wasn't natural because of some disease, right? Well, and 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 while there is definitely a, a natural component to it, I think as much as anything, freaks, at least for the purposes of the shows, were made as much as they were born. Yeah. Well, yeah, that is a fair well, point. They had like mummified mermaids and stuff that ended up just being I, I like. I think that became what happened. They if, if they you, ran out of. Yeah, but if you go back to the you know to, you know, to the earliest days now now you know I think we've probably done this forever. Okay, mm-hmm. but the earliest things to be be recognized as freak shows were these people that would that would tour around to the uh, the, the courts of Europe, and they would bring the con- conjoined twins were often right. brought. Uh, you know, Siamese twins as as freaks of nature or. Uh, uh, what's the disease called where you where, where elephantitis? You, elephantitis, mm-hmm. or I was thinking of the where you get the pointed. Uh, oh, oh uh, crap! But I don't remember that one. But those, yeah, but they would be brought in as uh, you know as as missing links and touted as, as these these things. Uh, sometimes pygmies would be be brought in as this stuff. You know, uh, people that just just rarities. Yeah, and I I, I kind of wonder about this uh, and. While I think it is entirely wrong and immoral to, uh, you know, to, to parade somebody down around against their will, sometimes these were people that were, uh, you know, that they were voluntarily uh, taking something about them and selling it. Well, and is think, that immoral at that point? Well, and I think one of the first things that you have to recognize before you explore the morality of of these sorts of uh, attractions is. You have to identify what the service is that, that's being rendered. And it is feeding human curiosity. And, and we do definitely have a drive to check out things that are unusual. Have you ever been to a World's Fair? I'm no. sorry, John, I jumped uh, on. When I was a kid, I went to the World's Fair in Knoxville. I was very, very young. Uh, but, uh, they had a, if I remember correctly, and, and somebody could correct me here, but I remember there being like uh, an Indian village there where they they brought people in and, and they they were, they, you know, they were showing the, uh, you know the way they lived, and then there was a, a ja- the Japanese area had cultural Japanese, and that's essentially the same thing. You know, it's not really a freak show, but it's it, it's curiosity of the unknown. Yeah, well, and I, I think there's 
you've been trying to talk for a minute. Go ahead, John. Um, so I, I, I want to let him talk this time. Okay. This is a good show already. Look at this. <laughs> um, no, I, I want to ask a question because you kind of made an assertion <clears throat> that it's immoral to, to have a freak show uh, against their will. And, and I'm going to ask a question that should leave many of our listeners morally aghast, but I think it's an important examination to make. What is the moral difference in a freak show where the freaks are either kidnapped or held against their will and a zoo? I, I, so there is Free a, will. Free will to me. There is a lot of question about uh, the morality of having zoos at all. There is. Um, now, we've actually done a show on conservationism, I think. Or I don't think it was solely on conservationism, but we did talk a bit about it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the argument that you're going to get from a lot of people. Is that the ecology show we did? Ecocentrism. Eco Ecocentrism. Maybe that was it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so one of the primary functions that zoos serve is um, studying animals to better understand them and conserving endangered species. Because you aren't seeing dogs and cats in zoos. You're seeing um, endangered, critically endangered um, animals in there, and they're trying to preserve the spe species. Whereas in a freak show – they are not trying to further propagate these um, these rarities, and and I think that's going to be the distinction. Well, that a lot no, of people are but find. but I mean, even in a zoo, okay, okay. So 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 there are some species they're trying to propagate, and there are many of these people that they aren't. And I think the balance is is off. I think with the pygmies, maybe you could argue that they they were doing some propagation there. But however, um, we see stuff like uh, ligers. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. albino tigers. And then we're not trying to make more, you know, of yeah. these. They're just taking care of them, but the, they're, you know, showing them on display. So, I mean, even mm -hmm. there, I, I mean, I, I, I think, I think we give a moral pass. And, and, and I'm as guilty as anyone to the way we treat animals that we then look in horror upon when we do it to humans. Yeah. And I, th I think we, we need to examine why that difference exists. I, I, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm a little more old fashioned because I just, I don't think animals have rights. I don't, I don't, I don't, I want to protect them. I do want, I, I don't want you abusing animals. I, I think somebody that does, it's a terrible, terrible person, but I don't think that they are, uh, you, you know, creating great governments and creating documents and creating this stuff that that, that, that says I have these rights. Uh, but it, neither are conjoined tw but, twins. No, well, no, but but they're but they're people, and we call them human rights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, human rights by definition would not be uh, uh, rights of of life. No, we do uh, have there are rights. Natural, there are there are, but I think there's something different there. Yeah. I think there's a level that's different. Well, and what uh, we see what we see with 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 the freak shows is the what we see with animals is we give rights to the animals that are closest to us. And you might argue that they're close to us also. So, and, and we have some kind of internal drive to say things that are more like us or helpful to us or, or friendly to us. Those things deserve rights. Things yeah, that aren't. Wasps, fuck mosquitoes, those. ants, yeah. they have no rights. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. give, we give more rights to mammals, uh, snakes. For most people have no rights. That, like, that, that, if it's alive and near me, it's dead. That, that, you know? Exactly. You've been to my house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, of course, you know, bugs. Like, nobody thinks twice about stepping on a bug, except for John, who, when and I Janus. say kill the spider on my pillow, doesn't. Nope. I take it outside. No, or, I kill him. or you just don't do anything with He's it. He's fine. He's killing a mosquito or something. Not on my pillow. Well, th th did you see? It was see? huge. It was the size of my hand. Were there any mosquitoes on your Were pillow? Were there any mosquitoes on the pillow? That was it my was question. This big. Were there any mosquitoes? The mosquito? On by the way, she held her hand the up there. Spider. If you were just on a, uh, uh, if you're listening on the podcast, yeah, um, we need to clip that but, and use it for other things. <laughs> yes, just holding. The, talk to the hand. It's this big. <laughs> this big. Yes. Anyway, around. My God, <laughs> uh, Mike. Um, are you talking girth or inches? What What does this mean? I'm, I'm body, <laughs> legs. <laughs> okay. It was missing three. It was a five-legged spider. Yeah. I got you. This is the length of the legs. You cut buckets. <laughs> Three yes. <down> there. <laughs> See? Now we have a spider. All right. So <laughs> not the point though. <laughs> but I, I want to get back to this morality question because Do you know how spiders mate. I'll tell you about it later, does, Mike, and you'll become a, obsessed. Does it have a cork? <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. and it's going to freak you out. So anyway, go ahead. 
Now I'm, now I'm, I'm, I'm they burrow by into it. your chest. They lay eggs through your mouth, and then a baby like no, shoots out of your it. chest. No, that that was alien. Oh, that was yes, alien. Yes, yes. Got, got this, this confused. Sorry, anyway, you were saying. So, I, I again, I I wonder about this morality question because uh, you know I try to be at that 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 point where <laughs> you are free to do with yourself whatever you want to be, right? Whatever you want to do, and if you are. Uh, you know, if you have a, a, a mutation or, or there's some, some reason why you are different and you choose to be part of a show, I don't know that what you're doing is immoral. Yeah. Okay. Because you've made a choice. You're being paid for it. This is, you're not being forced. But the question then becomes, is it a choice if your mutation is such a, is, is to such a level that that's the only thing you can do, that you can't get a job doing something else? So, um, something that I want to address here is that anybody getting a job, anybody seeking a means of, um, of earning income to support themselves is seeking to exploit something that they believe to be better in themselves than in other, or unique to themselves sure, sure. than in other people. So I think there is an argument to be made that these people have maybe an easier time identifying their unique feature um, and have decided to capitalize on this particular feature of themselves that that is going to make it easier for them to earn a living because they're not have they're having to compete with, with a much smaller pool of people for that money so I, I think there is I think there is a moral conundrum here um and i think there's a entity i'll say that is morally in the wrong um but i don't think it's the ones that the people tend to point to i, I think the entity with, with the moral issue here is society for not taking better care of their so disadvantaged in their society mm-hmm. But I don't think it's them for taking the opportunity they get. And I don't think it's the one person who is taking care of them and the only way that they know how yeah. by giving them a job. I don't think it's those two people. I think it's the fact that society would abandon them if this guy hadn't well, come around. What, what, what's society supposed to do? Are, 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 are you arguing that I am my brother's keeper? Well, yeah, no. Well, I th- I what I'm so. arguing is that the fact that a woman has a beard may not actually impact, probably doesn't impact, whether or not she is capable of being a paralegal. No, but it probably makes it more difficult to get hired. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's I think, the argument that John's well, making and, and I'm is also, they're using a, these physical deformities in a lot of ways. That's not what you're saying? I, I, I mean, so so here, here's the argument I'm making. If you have, you know, I don't, I don't know, legless, you know, or, or paraplegic guy who who had some horrible accident and has gotten hurt and the only way that he has to support himself is to go to the freak show i'm not making some legal obligation on society that they have to do this but i think probably most of us could afford to forgo a cup of coffee every week and we could take care of these people they they'll never be rich but they'll be taken care of and i think that's a moral thing okay. to do or well but okay, okay. colonel tom thumb uh, I've forgotten how tall he was, three foot something, a little short, short, short. He was P.T. Barnum found him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he toured with Colonel Tom Thumb for years, claimed he was a colonel in what, American Revolution, I think. I don't yeah. remember. Uh, but, uh, in a time period when most work was physical labor, mm-hmm. Colonel Tom Thumb was not capable of doing that kind mm-hmm. of labor. He was not, he just didn't have that physical ability to do the way that men made Right. Her career. He found a way to do this. Right. But he was a, he was an oddity. Mm-hmm. He was ridiculed. He was, he was, he was made fun of. He became a celebrity. But are the people that went and saw that, uh, doing something immoral by going to that? I don't think, I don't think it's necessarily immoral to go. I think if you go and you're an asshole and you're the one chunking tomatoes, yeah, it's probably immoral. Yeah. But I don't think necessarily just showing up and, and, you know, in, in some way, you're supporting these people. Um, just don't be a dick. Yeah. I went to one when I was a kid, and I, re- I, I, I had to go see it. I mean, it was something. It was. I'm curious. I want to know right. everything. But I remember my mother asking me about it afterwards because it was something that she didn't think I should get to at all. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be your choice. You go. And I did. 
and afterwards talking and, and felt dirty for it. Mm-hmm. I just felt like I was like I was part of the problem. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Well, I mean, again. I don't know that I still wouldn't go yeah. out, out of curiosity, but but you know, there's something there's something in there that is inherently uh, wrong in my mind mm-hmm. with being part of a system that paints somebody as less than others, yeah. and that's what you're doing. Is you're <laughs> that that show, generally speaking, is painting somebody as yeah. less yes. than human, or I won't even say less as other than. Human, more yeah. animal like, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, well, and and that's kind of the thing is a zoo, yeah. yeah. Is is what these do is they perpetuate this idea that um, it's okay to exploit somebody for being different than you. Um, so we can look at this and say, is acceptance of freak shows a um, is it contributing to society having a harder time getting past this others are bad um, idea? Um, well, and, you know, I, I, going back to the animal equivalent, and I don't want to lean on this too heavily, I think there's some interesting gems to be gleaned here, but I, I don't want to sound like I'm saying these people are are animals, ergo this this line of argumentation is more valid. I think this line of argumentation could be used in a, in a lot of things, right. not just freak shows. However, we have a new cat, okay? We found a stray cat at, at the local draft house, and we took it home, we took care of it. I think most communities and societies think it is a good idea to adopt local animals, take care of them, kind of take that burden off the the street. Exactly. Spay and neuter your pets, you guys. Yes. Uh, I I think most societies think that's a good idea. Now, if a guy came through town and said, hey, I got an idea. It's going to take care of all the strays around here. I'm going to make like a circus dog and cat show. And he collects up all the stray animals and trains them and makes a circus dog and cat show. He was doing what the rest of society refused to do. So I don't necessarily think he's immoral as long as he's not, you know, abusing these animals. Right. But I think the more moral, idealistic thing to do would be for the community to just proactively take care of its issues before the circus guy comes through. So you're saying that there should be a program like, similar to um, Hiring Heroes... For hiring freaks. Like the programs that are already established to hire uh, military veterans. Like we could set up a private charity to uh, fund, promote, and distribute information on hiring people with physical oddities. I, I don't, I, I want to be clear and make sure that, that the distinguishment is made that I'm not trying to come in and offer some hard solution on whether they should be hired or given welfare or put up in a home or, or right. what the solution should be. But I'm generally saying society through private interactions should take care of its people so they maybe don't have not, to go to the freak shows. Maybe not society should, but individuals should. Indiv- well, yes. Individuals yeah. make well, up I just, society. I just, I, 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 they do, yeah. but, but when, you, when you say society, people hear state. Yeah, and, People and, should and, not hear that. I, I, but they yeah. do. I know. That's why I want to make and, sure and we're... The, yeah, yeah and I'm not here. saying that the state. I'm yeah. not saying the state should. I, I think that has its own moral issues, and then we get into moral trade off. I think the idealistic solution is for individuals to take care of their community. We have people, we have the locksmith that roams around town. You see him sometimes standing in the middle of 69 talking to himself. Everybody knows this guy has problems. And yet, you see the locksmith walking by and say, hey, you want. An appetizer, we make sure he's fed, we make sure he's taken care of, we swerve a little wider when he's crossing the street, yeah. but we take care of yeah. our own, you yeah. know? Yeah, I, I, I can yeah. see that, I can see that. Let me ask you something about, uh, you, you know, I, the, the, the great age of the freak show mm-hmm. is over with, I think, you know, we're, 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 at least in the Western world. Yeah, collected uh, freak shows, I think, yeah, are definitely yeah. over. There, I mean, there, there, there are the those YouTube things. Argument. You see them, you see them in Vegas still, some things, but they tend to be, be feats of skill more than, uh, the mutations, right. okay? Before we go into that, do we want to talk about the beer for a I, moment? I, sure, sure, I guess. Okay. Yeah. I feel like we're kind of coming down on the bottom, of the, okay. back into the hill. Okay. So. Who wants to start this one then? 
I'll go ahead. Okay. So, this is a really interesting sour. In fact, if you didn't tell me it was a sour, I'd never believe it was a, a lactobacillus. Although I would not believe it was a blonde either. Yeah, it, it doesn't really taste like either. I, I'm reading the top of the can here. It says, Juicy L with notes of sun-kissed fruit, lemon, citrus, and melon. And, you know, I think it hits it on the head. It's kind of like a lemonade. Yeah. Like, it's, it's got a touch of sour. It's like a lemonade heavier on the lemon. It does have some fruit notes in there, but it doesn't taste like a sour to me and definitely doesn't taste like a blonde, which I don't know how you could put all those flavors into a blonde and maintain that. I just, I don't yeah. see how it, that said, it's all right. It's drinkable for sure. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't turn my nose up at this. On the other hand, I will probably not be buying it again. Um, I guess just to, to get right down to the rating, I'm going to give it a uh, 2.1, but I'm going to encourage people, if they want to try something different, to 2. give one? it a... 2.1? Yeah. Okay. Uh, me or you? On you. Okay. Uh, I've enjoyed the beer. Mm-hmm. I, I, I I don't think there's anything real special about it, but it's mm-hmm. it's an enjoyable beer. It's it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's refreshing. Mm-hmm. It's uh, on a hot day. This is going to be something that you can drink and drink easily. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of carbonation to it. It's, it, 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 it goes down pretty simple. Not a lot uh, of sour. There's not a lot of sour, but there's enough. It's punchy to me. Yeah, like it's like yeah, like a fruit punch almost with the, with the, the flavor in it. Um, I'm gonna give it a, a I'm gonna give it a decent rating. I'm gonna go two three. Okay, All right. not quite benchmark, but but you know, not bad. Okay, so I already had mine written down here, and I'm giving it a two two. Two two. <laughs> I said two two. Um, we have got these so one up that you can put around the cans. A little two. Oh, that'd be cute. Okay, uh, but anyway, it is. A very fruity beer. It is, I think it is a sour. Um, or I think it's identifiable as a sour. Though it is way on the lower end. Um, it's, yeah, definitely. it's not very funky. Yeah, yeah. No, not at all. Um, but I think because of the flavors that it has, and probably being based as a blonde helps this out, actually. But I think based on the flavors that it has, this would actually... Um, I, I've said this before about some other sours that we've tried, but I think this one actually takes the cake in that regard, that this is a fantastic transition to sours. It gets you that, that little bit of kick, um, that you're not used to getting in other beers, um, without being overwhelming. And so if I've ever said this is a good sour transition for any other beer, like this one put put ahead of it this is the one that you show to somebody who maybe isn't super into beers um and wants to try a sour beer this is the one you give them yeah you know uh we recently uh me and anna recently drank the duchess again duchess de borgogna i think it's called a duchese de borgogna actually um but but call it the duchess and when we first did our sour beer show we had like three beers on that show um we we said that the Duchess was a good transitional beer. Having drank it again after having some more experience and taste for sours and then drinking this soon after, I like the Duchess. The Duchess is good. It's got a nice flavor balance, but it is a little, a little more in your face. It's got a little and, more fuck to it. it yeah. And, and, and I like it, but, but I agree with you. This is probably a better yeah. transition beer. I'd than rather we'll be- drink the B- Duchess, but this is a yeah. better transition. Yes. Yeah. 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 The Duchess has a better overall flavor, but this is a good introduction to a sour. I think so. And I, I think the fruit notes help that transition a lot. Yeah. So all of that to say, um, I do think it's a fantastic sour transition. Um, I could stand for either the sour to be a little more notable, um, the fruit notes to be taken back just a hair um, to let the blonde backbone stand out a little m- bit more. Um, and that's that's why it gets a 2-2 rating from me. I'd like a little more of a bell curve to the flavor. Yeah. It's, 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 it gets kind of a flat. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's just there. Uh, but that's, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Yeah. But Let's it is a game. good beer. Fuck date lawnmower. Fuck date lawnmower. Um, I don't think that this is the sort of beer that is going to seal the deal for you. Um, but I think used in the right circumstances with the right person, it can be impressive and definitely like if, if you're scaling up and, and, you know, zero is neutral, like maybe minus three, you're not getting laid for sure. Um, and like plus three is like, you're definitely getting laid. I think this gets you a point. 
Okay. Uh, used in the right circumstances. It'll move you in the right direction. Yeah. It'll either not move you at all or it'll move you a little bit in the right direction. Okay. Which state? I, I think I'm going to kind of lean on, you know, the whole speech we gave on tra- on Vienna Transitional Beer. Uh, whichever date you're trying to introduce someone new to sours, I, I, I don't really see much other use for it. Not a first date. For yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. No, yeah, uh, yeah. But if, if you're like, hey, you want to try some sours, put this in the flight. Yeah. Sometime when you're trying to, like, yeah. try something new. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, not a lawnmower beer to me. Uh, it's just, it, it's too, it, I don't know, it's just too fancy for a lawnmower beer. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. So. That, that kind of takes care of our, our little game. So it's kind of 2-1, 2-2, 2-3? Is that what we did? Yeah, it comes yeah, out okay. as a 2-2. All okay. right, not bad, not bad. <laughs> comes out as a 2-2. Uh, so we talked about, about this idea that the freak show uh, it's kind of had its golden day. It's, it's still out there. It's still in Vegas. They've still got, uh, you know, I think YouTube has, has replaced it in a lot of ways. But how about, what's the difference between this and... Uh, when you're in New Orleans and it's two in the afternoon and the transvestite parade goes down down Bourbon Street, yeah. Uh, so I, I guess the difference is, to me, that the transvestites yeah. really want to be there. And now, it's, I'm, using, it's, I'm using what they call it. They call it the two o'clock trans transvestite parade. Yeah, right. yeah, but, but they really want to be there. I mean, th- this yeah. is kind of a, a passion project for them. It's not a necessity for them. And I think we can it's make a normalization project. Yeah, it, it is. But those, the, but the people that that gather on the balconies to watch it are they not in fact doing the same thing as the ones that go to the free? I shows? mean, I, so so the 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 difference I see is, and and we could even make the argument about some freak shows is they really want to be there. Uh, we could say for the, this transvestite parade, even if they weren't making a dime, they would do it because they're doing it. Um, and, and, you know, I think if somebody's really passionate about being in a freak show, then great for them. Um, but that's not been a lot of the history of it. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Well, and I actually want to kind of take a look. Um, one of the, or, or I guess two of the physical oddities that were featured in a lot of freak shows were people who were tat- heavily tattooed or pierced. Yeah. And, and, and those are still, whenever you see them, that's still one of the big ones. However, um, I guess one of the things that I kind of want to broach for just a moment, and we did this a little bit with the transvestite parade, is um, are these freak shows potentially serving a very vital purpose in collecting the things that society views to be the weirdest out of people and introducing them to the general population and making it not seem so weird. Now they, they are called freak shows. And so you can make that argument, I think, but tattooed and pierced people at one point could not get a job. Yeah anywhere um uh, specifically in the u.s though in a lot of other western areas as well um when i was a kid it meant you were in the service yeah yeah but and you had a military tattoo yeah, or a hula girl or something yeah but, but you had something which is yeah. essentially a military yeah. tattoo yeah um it means you set your base in hawaii yeah. yes um but what we're seeing now <coughs> like <coughs> i went up to jonah's school the other day and the freaking receptionist is in capri pants and I can see a tattoo on her ankle. Like, um, I don't get looked at like I'm crazy with a nose ring in yeah. anymore. Um, like having piercings and tattoos is becoming less of a thing. And could that have been contributed to by things like freak shows where people is that were- normalization? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The Overton window movers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a good point. I fucking love that window. Maybe that's the purpose of the freak show is to move that Overton window. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe, not the express purpose, but the well, uh, and maybe for some people it is. Maybe. I I I think there are probably people that that see it as a normalization tool. Well, I think that gets into the distinction between the Overton window situation and the well, we got to do something with these people. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Hey, uh, another question about freak shows. Uh, the guy that does Modern Rogue, um, I can't oh. think of his name oh. now. Joe yeah. Rogan. No. No, no Modern, Modern Rogue. Modern Rogue. Rogue. Uh, Sorry. Uh, uh, he started off God. as a. Uh, Brian Brushwood. Yeah. Brian Brushwood. He started off at traveling in a, a, a circus kind of thing where he breathed fire and, and swallowed So did Pendulette, yeah. Yeah. And is that a freak show? Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. so. 
it's not, I, you know, because it's not, it's not a physical change. I mean, it's not like I'm, I, he's physically, but he's doing something. Yeah. Well, and, and, you but know. Somehow we, somehow that, that, that seems to be less of a moral gray issue than well, the other. I, I think the difference is that, that those people aren't physically disabled. In fact, in many ways, they're very physically capable. They have learned a skill. Yeah. And they, th- that's the way they're choosing to, you know. Okay. Eating glass, walking on glass, any of that, you know. Yeah, because just because you breathe fire and you swallow knives, um, if you don't have some other physical oddity about yourself, you're not going to be discriminated in the workplace the same way that a lot of these people Unless you're going are. to decide to, br- decide to breathe fire while in your interview. the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm that, a receptionist a- who breathes fire and lets blood drip, drip out of my mouth. Yeah. I mean, that's a fair point, yeah. but I'm saying I'm just like, saying I would hire that person. I if would hire that person. If they're not doing those things, they still have a fair. Sh- they yeah. have a fair yeah. shot in the workplace. You know, I'm about done with breathing fire. I mean, it's it's gotten old. I want to see someone breathe water. <laughs> Anybody in particular? No, I mean, just you want somebody to start like somebody yeah. you want to start with that. I have a list. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Mike's on my list. Uh, thank you. I'm I kidding. appreciate it. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> so you think you're talented? I, yeah. I think that's true. Sometimes I'm on that list. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'm pretty sure when we recorded last week, there was a few minutes in there where I was definitely on that on list. On the top. Yeah. Uh, so no, you couldn't make it to the top. I kind of have a question for, for us all now, just kind of the, the round robin. Freak show comes through town. Uh, Carnival comes in. There's a, there, there is a, a freak show of physical oddities, an old school freak show. Do you go to it? You know, that's an interesting question. And I think that depends on what you define as freak show. If it's kind of the traditional freak show, I probably don't and not for any moral high ground, just I don't care. But I've, I've been to, uh, training parades before. I've been to, uh, uh, let's see, I've, I've, most of it's been a, around the We've other. been to libertarian conventions, which are basically free yeah. shows. Yeah, we, we had a Rombi at our last like, one. Just nobody's furry paid. Furry conventions, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I w- yeah, I would go to a Comic-Con or a furry convention just yeah. because I'd yeah. be fascinated by that. So my answer is no, but I don't want to like mask it as if it's because I'm some... It's not a moral issue. It's no, just I not just, interested. Yeah, I just okay. don't care. See, <laughs> this is going to sound so dumb. Um, <laughs> I would either miss it or I would... Um, I would want to take a look at who's putting it on and if they have a reputation for treating their freaks well, then I would probably. <laughs> yes, John. I don't know. Just the way you said it kind of like it, reminded yeah. me of like slavery. Like they're, they, they feed treat them. The, they, they treat the they, slaves very well. They give them treats well, and don't no. whip them too much, you know? No, I'm saying like, I know, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like if, if the freaks are consenting and, uh, well, and I think that's the key. But if the freaks are consenting and, and it's got a good reputation, um, for not trying to ostracize these people, then I think I would go assuming I had time, but I wouldn't make it a priority. I'd go. I'd go and I'd feel dirty afterwards, but I would go. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, my curiosity is just too big. Yeah. Uh, I'm one of those guys that, that, you know, I, I've been to the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. Yeah. And by the way, I, I choose not most cases. But, yeah, uh, absolutely. There's a reason why he says believe it or not. Yeah. But uh, I, you know, I've, I've been to those. I, if there's an oddity out there, I want to see it. Yeah. Uh, and I get that. I just would, I, I think probably. And feel dirty afterwards. Well, I think I would probably prefer to just go to a furry convention or I would go to a libertarian a convention. convention or I would Comic-Con. definitely go to Comic-Con. Yeah. I mean, I would just go to one of those freak shows. And watch the unpaid freaks. <laughs> Just go to Vegas. Go to the uh, Bunny Ranch, you know. Or that. <laughs> That's a different kind of freak. Uh, uh, is that a freak in the sheets? Is that I, what they call that? I, I can't afford that. I can't afford to go to that one. So uh, It's a lady in the streets and a, f- a freak in the streets, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, uh, so I think is we there have, anything else? I think we have covered this. This was an interesting topic. It that, was. It was uh, a lot of fun. I, I wasn't sure where this was going to go. Uh, Especially since we hadn't prepped for it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we had, by the way, we had a show planned for today. We had a guest that was going to join us to yeah. cover a topic, and the guest bailed. He's an asshole. Well, let's, let's give him some credit. He messaged us, like, moments before we started the show, oh, yeah. set him up. Supposedly, he's getting ready. He's going to be here. We're going to do another show. Yeah. So if if all that works out, time and everything... We'll do the show next, but yeah. yes, he, he he definitely did oversleep at the least. At the least, yes. You're an asshole. <laughs> okay. Um, but no. So we said, well, shit, what can we do a show on? And let's, let's do after an hour, 
we got to freak shows yeah, and said, yeah. we'll do that. That's an interesting one. So but, uh, this is what a show with no prep looks like. Absolutely. Uh, well, Tell us, is it if, better than a show with prep? If you've been watching the show for very long, you already knew what a show with very little prep looked like. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you like what we're doing, you can hit us up on Patreon at patreon.com slash six pack philosophy. Uh, you can also find fun swag at, uh, teespring.com search six pack philosophy you can also search six pack philosophy on social media all over the place uh follow us on there thank you guys so much for tuning in we've enjoyed it and we hope you have too cheers cheers my turn <laughs> six pack philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you if you would like to support us go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like share and subscribe 